Higher Education 101. This is such a big topic that I'm breaking it up into a couple different parts. So this is part one. We're going to talk specifically about degrees and California school systems in general and how to work it. Okay, so what degrees where? We've got community college, universities, graduate school, and specialized graduate school. Pre-collegiate and undergraduate level work can be done at a community college, at least those first two years of that undergraduate work. Community colleges offer certificates, which would mean like a specific skill set exactly for what you're studying for, welding or office technology or, um, you know, automotive technician, right? Certificates, as well as associate's degrees. And there's many different fields that require no more than an associate's degree to get a job in, like nursing, right? You get your associate's degree in nursing and you get your RN licensing exam and you go to work. So there's quite a few of those, but if you have a goal or a need to transfer to a university, that is also considered undergraduate. And you can get there a bachelor's degree, a bachelor's of science, bachelor's of arts. It doesn't really matter. One is not higher or better than another. It's just a matter of what uh, subject area you are studying under science, arts, okay? Graduate school is considered graduate level, and this is where your master's degrees are and your doctorates, right? Um, the master, and it's not always um, sequential, okay? So master, you don't necessarily have to get a master's degree before you go to medical school or dentistry, right? Your DDS, um, or even lawyers, right? That you go to a law school, you don't necessarily need a, a master's degree. You apply straight to law school. But for me, like I had to get a master's degree in education with a school counseling focus, and then my next step would be PhD. Um, you don't really jump sh jump those levels um, in certain settings, okay? So there's all these different options and things available in the education system as a whole. And is it even worth it? This is where you get to decide where the educational attainment, you know, what level of degree um, helps you earning power wise and also hiring power wise and this is back from 2012 but i thought it was a really great visual on just the bureau of labor statistics population survey of the educational level right so this is less than a high school diploma at the very bottom and how in general the more education you have the less unemployment and the higher the earnings okay it seems like common sense but it's not always common sense, right? And it's not always like this either. And that's why it's an average, right? Um, but in general, hiring power is greater when you have a higher degree and uh, earning power is higher as well. In general, the California higher education system is made up of three different schools. The community colleges, the California State Universities, the CSUs, and the University of California, UCs. One's not, not necessarily better than the other. They all serve different purposes within California, and California, the state as a whole, supports all of them, supplements the funding sources, and so your tuition isn't as high. Community college get the most, and we have 113 community colleges in California. Columbia is just one of many, and um, they get the most funding, and so you get the cheapest tuition, right? Um, CSUs and UCs just step up each one higher and um, how, you know, depending on what you're studying and what your goal is, one might be better than the other. There are also many private schools in California. Here's a few of them, UOP, uh, University of Pacific in Stockton. I went to Biola University down in LA, Stanford, ITT Tech, right? All of these schools are private and they are still universities and they still provide bachelor's degree and doctorate degree and things like that, but they aren't supplemented by the state. And so private schools are typically more expensive um, tuition wise, but they also typically have better alumni funding and, and endowment funds and things like that. So they have a lot of scholarship opportunities and ways to help students make them more affordable. So don't count private schools out um, if you don't think you can afford them, just apply and see what happens financial aid wise. The differences in the main uh, UC and CSU systems is that UCs 
are primary academic research institutions for the state, where the CSUs, their main focus is uh, instruction, right? Rather than research, it's instruction, including professional and teacher education, right? So they're training you to do a profession at the CSU level. You can also do graduate studies at CSU, so that's where I did my master's degree, but really their goal is to get you those degrees and get you into the workforce. And things like teaching and engineering and health professions and communication and agriculture, those are things that CSUs focus on because those are the jobs you need your bachelor's degree and you got to work. Whereas graduate and professional educational programs like theoretical and research and analytical skills, things like, um, again, like doctors and lawyers and things that, you know, professions that need that higher level degree, um, UCs would be great preparation for that. So again, depending on what you want to do, depends on what school might be your best fit. Here's some cost comparisons for you. This website, collegetuitioncompare.com, gives you the current tuition rates, but they don't have it in a little groovy chart like this. So I included the image of this um, form I got from San Francisco State back in 2014, 2015 school year, and they break down the community college, CSU, UC, and the, the private independent costs um, in a really great cost comparison chart. And Overall, the registration and fees are the things that make the difference for these systems. Your books and supplies, your transportation, your personal expenses, you know, deodorant is going to cost the same wherever you go, right? So your personal expenses, books, you know, book A and book B are going to be the same at wherever you buy them. So those are kind of same across the board, but the tuition is the thing that is the, the kicker. And then also the room and board, depending on where the school is, depends, you know, the location makes the money, right? So you're going to go to UC Santa Barbara, it's going to cost a lot more to live in Santa Barbara than it is at CSU Bakersfield, right? So it kind of just depends on your location about the room and board costs. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of just kind of the variety of costs. And again, don't let costs be a deterrent in the sense of application because you never know what the financial aid awards are gonna be until you get them. So don't count things out. It's helpful to have a really good idea about costs and reality, but also don't let it be a barrier um, until you know for a fact that it is. A lot of people, because of the cost efficiency of a community college, choose to do a community college for the first couple years and transfer to a university. And so that's what this slide is kind of about, Columbia to university. And we have a ton of different educational planning resources for you, the primary one being your academic counselor. Okay, so use your educational planning tool and your counselor to know what general education you should be taking, to know what major classes you should be taking, to know what schools might be great for you and how to use our courses to your benefit. Also, we have a career transfer center in the Manzanita uh, building that offers um, assistance with your applications to universities. We have workshops available and we also bring uh, recruiters from universities onto our campus to talk to you about admissions, policies and procedures, and about their school in general. We also offer once a year a transfer fair for you to come and talk to on-campus recruiters. General education is required for associate's degree as well as for transfer, and it depends on where you're going and what your major is as to which ones would be best for you. And so I've just kind of highlighted where they are along with the page numbers in our catalog, but you really are going to work with a counselor to determine which one is right for you. Course numbering is important when you're talking about uh, transferring and understanding what lower division and upper division courses are. So if you think about a high school, right, you've got your lower classmen who are freshman, sophomore, your upper classmen who are junior, senior. Well, in college, it's also kind of the same, but it's not determined by age. It's determined by course numbering. So like at the university, 
freshman sophomore level courses might be numbered 100 or 1000 or 200 2000 um, where the upper division your junior senior level courses are going to be at the three or four hundred level or three thousand four thousand depending on the university um, and the upper division stuff is not available at the community college level because we're focused on those first two years and at Columbia, we clump those first two years, those 100 and 200 level courses, into a 1 through 99 numbering system. All right, CSU Mentor is the website for the California State University system. All 23 campuses feed off this, and you can use it to plan, explore all the different campuses, and to apply, okay? Well, at Columbia, we have some things you can do for the CSU, mostly our AAT or AST, our Associate's Degrees for Transfer, is a degree with a guarantee. And I'm going to let your counselor tell you all about it, but basically it's a guarantee that gets you into the California State University system and then out in a timely manner. So the guarantee is that you get in and you get out. And so you'll want to talk to your counselor about those. 60 transferable units are required, so those 1 through 99 courses that we just talked about, 60 units for that. Major preparation, right, those lower division major preparation courses. And then general education, specifically Golden 4, which are your English 1A, your speech class, your transferable math class, and a critical thinking course. University of California has very similar type requirements such as 60 transferable units, but UCs are a bit more picky. They require UC transferable and you can find that in the course description of every one of our courses, whether it's CSU or UC transferable. And so you want to make sure you're working closely with the counselor to make sure you're picking the right classes if you want to be eligible for UC. They also count units differently and so you want to make sure that you're not over counting or under counting. They also have a transfer admission guarantee so you're going to want to talk to your counselor about a tag or follow this link and read more about it. They also have pathways that just give you some really clear, clear guidelines on what classes to take at the community college to get you really competitive as an applicant for the UC system. Articulation agreements. Articulation is really just a big word for what counts at Columbia will count like this at UC Davis or just what counts for what at these various institutions. Assist.org is the repository for the whole bit of California schools, so, so community colleges, CSUs, and UCs. A lot of the private schools that we deal with a lot have um, have these articulation agreements as well. They're just housed in different places, and so your counselor can help with that. But um, we'll look at assist together and determine specific things that you can be taking that will count at the universities that you want to go to. Consider making your choice work for you on a variety of levels. If you are going to a university and transferring, consider earning an associate's degree along the way. A lot of the times the requirements are the same for both, or at least similar, and um, you know, 60 units are, are required for both. So you're already kind of doing the work, and if we can make it to where you have another notch in your belt with a degree um, on your resume, that's all good for you, right? Consider adding an associate's degree to a certificate. If you're working on a certificate, like say for automotive or welding, consider adding some general ed onto that certificate, and maybe your hiring or earning power will be a little bit higher, right? We saw that progression, and maybe even more flexibility long term with your degree, such as our fire students. Um, you know, if you get the certificate, that's great, you can get hired, but maybe later on you want to move up to a management position and you'll need a degree for that. So it just, you know, in the long term might work better for you to get a degree along the way. And then consider applying for the TRIO program if you have a goal to degree get a degree and to transfer, you might be eligible for a lot of the special stuff they offer. Here's your action plan for higher education and there's a lot that goes into it, but really it's about you, about your plan, about staying current, working with a counselor, keeping up the grades, and pursuing your interests. So hopefully this was helpful in understanding kind of the general big picture and then we can dive 
in part two more into just the educational planning piece.